in Privacy Watch, Facebook revealed a widespread hack on Friday that compromised tens of millions of accounts. The tech giant said that earlier this week, its security team uncovered an issue that affected 50 million accounts. So as a precaution, another 40 million users will need to log back in due to a flaw in Facebook's view as feature. But the hack may be even more widespread than Facebook initially announced. Jennifer Greigel is an assistant professor of communication at SI Newhouse School of Communications at Syracuse University. Jennifer joins me now on set. So, Jennifer, Facebook has announced that third-party sites may be affected by the hack. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about anyone that's using Facebook login uh, to connect an outside party. Uh, so it could be something like Tinder. We've seen Airbnb is another example to apps like Spotify. So it really goes to show how widespread uh, their privacy has been exposed. So can you explain to us how this hack would allow access to other sites? To other side, well, they've gained access to what's called the, the token. Mm -hmm. And so once they're inside, they have the ability, apparently, to, to go in and access uh, other apps. And it's because there's integrations on the back end with Facebook. And so we have to remember, Facebook is saying this was extremely complicated. They triangulated to find this exposure and hack in. It should also remind people of how complex Facebook has become as well, and that is for them to make sure their code is clean. And I think this really highlights the failure of uh, how the technology is being integrated. Is there a way around this feature for people who use it? Uh, for Facebook login, don't yeah. choose Facebook login. Uh, use uh, an email address. Uh, try and diversify your logins. Also, companies are starting to investigate this and uh, choose other options. For example, Hinge app, uh, which is another dating app, has not uh, exclusively relying on Facebook login anymore. So I think companies need to look to diversify away from Facebook Incorporated as well. Do we have a sense of what parties might be seeking your information and what it is exactly yeah. that they might be wanting yeah, to sure. get? And in the case of Tinder, this is an incredibly private platform, as we know. Um, but they could be looking for what we call PII, or personally identifiable information. So that could be your home address, which is something you might send to somebody in a private communication, which we know may have been exposed. So with this single sign-on feature, Facebook's goal is sort of to create trust, right? Mm -hmm. We know about the Cambridge Analytica hack, but your previous reporting, which I found so fascinating, notes another issue of trust with Facebook. Can you walk us through what you discovered? Um, well, I, what I had noticed was related recently uh, to what's called state-funded media. And it's something we don't talk about a lot. These are other uh, countries? These are uh, here in the United States, okay. uh, actually. We have media arms called Voice of America. There's entities through Europe called Radio for Europe. Um, but what I discovered was that they were targeting Facebook ads back at Americans, which is outside the scope of the law. So it just, again, it goes to show issues with not only uh, technology. Uh, mm -hmm. There's business model issues. Issues, but there's also just general operating uh, issues that the, the company needs, needs to address to protect Americans uh, from election meddling to propaganda. Did this go back to 2016? Does your research show that um, or is it just back to July? We can only uh, go back uh, to when Facebook opened up the political ads uh, archive, which was May uh, this year. Um, but I have been requesting information. They have not responded to me. So uh, we'll see. What does this mean for the regular user who's trying to protect their identity? You know, I would say when it comes to identity, we have to be just extremely cautious in how we log in, uh, what we say online, uh, and just try and, I would say, interact more in real life. Uh, mm -hmm. That's your safest bet, to be honest. Interact more with real life. Jennifer Grigal, I want to thank you thank very you. much, Professor, for joining us.